Okay then my friends, so in this video what I'd like to do is be able to read data from the database so we can list it right here because now we can add data, it's going to update and when those updates occur I want the UI to update as well to reflect that change in the data. So to do this we're going to set up a real-time listener with Firebase Firestore. Now we don't need a cloud function to do this, we can do all of this from the front end. So let us now do that by first of all creating a new JavaScript file and I'm going to call this requests.js. You can call it what you want, I'm calling it requests because it's going to ultimately be responsible for grabbing the requests data from the database and then outputting those to the DOM, the UI. So the first thing I'm going to do inside this file right here is to grab a reference to the requests collection inside the Firestore database. Remember, we have this requests collection right here because we want to listen to this collection for any changes. And when there is a change, for example, a new document being added or a document being upvoted, we want to grab that new data and then update the UI to reflect that change. So let us go over here and first of all, say const ref is equal to Firebase dot firestore and the reason we can use firestore is because inside index.html we have this thing right here and by the way we also need to add a reference or a script to the new javascript file we created so we use the firestore and then we want to grab a certain collection and the collection is requests so now we have a reference to that collection and we want to listen to changes. Now the way we do that is by using a function on this reference called on snapshot. And I'll explain this in a minute, but basically this fires a function, a callback function every time a change in this collection occurs. And this function takes in a snapshot object. So let's take that in. And this snapshot represents the collection in its current state with all its current data in at the time that this function fires. Now initially when our website first loads and it first runs this script right here then it's going to get an initial snapshot from this collection and that snapshot is going to contain all the documents that are currently in the collection and thereafter it's going to fire this function every time a change occurs in the database. So if I add a new document to this collection then it's going to fire this function again and send the new snapshot with the new state of the documents inside that collection. Okay, so it will pick up that change. So let me first of all just log this to the console so you can see what it looks like. Okay, so if I save this and come over here and refresh, let me first log in, Sean at the netninja.co.uk and it's test123. And then if I open up the dev tools and go to the console, then you can see view is not defined. I don't know why we have that. Let me just refresh and uh, get rid of that. Okay, so we get this error first of all, and it says in snapshot Firebase error missing or insufficient permissions. And that's because at the very start of this series, we locked down our Firestore database with security rules to make sure that no one outside of the Firebase server could access the data. We can access the data from Firebase functions using the admin SDK as we have done in the past. You can see right here we do things like admin.firestore and we can do that because this is a secure environment and we're using this admin SDK. We can do that from Firebase functions and it bypasses those security rules but from anywhere else we can't do that because we're not allowing permission to clients or third parties to go in and read or write to our database. So we need to change our database rules so that we can read from it but not write to it. I don't want to allow write rules to the front end but I do want to be able to read from it. So let's go to our database and go to rules and we just need to update these rules a little bit so that we can read. So you can see at the minute it says allow read write if false. 
So this right here is normally some kind of condition, and if that condition evaluates to true, we're allowed read and write access. If it evaluates to false, then we don't allow read and write access. Well, this is always gonna evaluate to false because we've said false. So we're never allowing read or write access. So what I'm gonna do is get rid of read from there, and instead I'm gonna come down below and I'm gonna say allow read. And I don't need to say if true, this automatically allows people to read from the database. However, they still won't be allowed to write to the database. So let me publish those. And then if we go back over here, it might take a minute for this change to update, but hopefully if I now refresh over here, we should be able to see this snapshot. So that is this object right here. And it represents the snapshot of the database collection requests at the moment that we first run this script or when we first run the website. So if we take a look inside here, we can see we have this docs property and that represents the documents inside the collection. Now at the minute, we just have one document right here. We can see the ID of the documents. And if we were to use the data method, we could get the data from that document as well. So what I'm going to do now is actually cycle through the snapshots and I'm going to create an array of data for each snapshot. So what we could do if we wanted to is say snapshots dot for each. And what that does is cycle through each of the documents inside the snapshot. Now at the minute we only have one document. So, you know, it's only going to cycle through it once, but in the future we might have five, six or seven documents and it will cycle through all of those documents and fire a function for each document where we get access to that function. So, in fact, what I'll do is create a variable called requests and set that equal to an empty array, first of all. And then inside here, what I'm gonna do is take the requests array and I'm going to push another object onto it for each document. And inside this object, I'm going to use the spread operator on the document data, dot, dot data. Remember, this is how we get the data from single documents. And then also I want the ID. So I'll make an ID property as well. And that will be the doc dot ID because we get that ID property on the document, which we've just seen right here. Okay, so I also want to store that as well. So now if at the end of that, I just log that to the console, console.log requests, then we should see an array of data basically. If I refresh, then we get this array and we get one object inside of it. We can see that object has a text property of Node.js, this many upvotes and this ID. Okay, so now we're storing that data in our own array and that's easier to work with. Now watch what happens if I add something first of all. So if I go to add request and start to add something in here, so say I do something like JavaScript and submit the request. Now we should get an updated snapshot once this runs the cloud function. And when we get that updated snapshot right here, it fires this function. It sets requests equal to a new empty array. It cycles through the snapshot and for each document it pushes some data onto the request array then we're logging that to the console so now we can see after we've added some new data to the collection we get an updated array with all of that data right here and we can see the new document up here okay so that's nice okay so what if i change something inside one of these documents because in the future we will be upvoting these so for example if i change this to one I'm going to update that. We should get a new snapshot over here because the data changed. And every time the data changes in that collection, we get a new snapshot. Fires the function, cycles through the snapshot documents and outputs the new requests. So now we can see upvotes is one. So what we're doing here is we're keeping our front end now kind of in sync with the Firestore database collection. So we have access to this live data all of the time, and we just need to figure out a way to get this live data onto the page over here. So we keep this list in sync with the Firestore collection. Now there's numerous ways to do this. We could just update the DOM every time we get a new snapshot ourselves, and we could do that by saying something like this. Let me just create a quick example over here. 
I'm going to say let HTML equal to an empty template string to begin with, right? And then what I'll do is say requests dot for each, and I'm going to fire a function for each request. So let me pass that object into the function. And by the way, request, remember, is equal to this array of data that we create. So we're cycling through that, and for each bit of data inside that array, we're firing a function for that bit of data. And I'm going to take the HTML that we have right here, and I'm going to update that. So I'll say plus equal to concatenate to it, add something to the end of it, and then we're going to add a template string, and this is going to be an li tag, and inside the li tag, I want to output the text. Now, I can do that inside a template string by using dollar curly braces, and then output whatever I want, and the request dot text is what I want. Remember, we have the text property on each one of these objects. So, I'm creating an li tag for each item inside the request object. So now we've updated that, what we can do is output this HTML to the DOM. So I could say selector, and I'm just gonna grab the UL. There is only one UL inside the entire document, and that's this thing right here. So it's gonna grab that, and then I'm gonna say that the inner HTML is equal to the HTML variable we created right here. So now every time the data changes, we're updating the HTML in the document to match that data. So let me save this and refresh over here. And we should see those two documents now after a second, but we don't. So let me quickly go back and okay, it should be inner HTML. So save that. And if I refresh again, hopefully this will work now. And now we can see we have JavaScript and Node.js. If I add a new one, let me say Laravel 6 again, submit the request and we should see that updated as well. Awesome. So this all works, and we're outputting all of the updated data now to the DOM. Now, this way is fine to do, but it's not always the most efficient and effective way of working, especially when we start to add click events to each item right here that we output to upvote them. We'd have to manually rebind those event listeners on every DOM update every time we did this. Now, an easier way to manage this list of data for the UI would be to use something like a view component, and I'm going to show you how to set that up in the next lesson.